Treating arthritis is not always straightforward. A lot of patients um, suffer from knee arthritis, and what they usually um, uh, experience when they go see the orthopedic surgeon is, uh, the orthopedic surgeon will evaluate them, they'll do an x-ray, they'll say, you know, you have a terrible arthritis, they'll use words like bone on bone, and then they'll offer a steroid injection, uh, maybe one, two, or three, and then they end up possibly getting an injection of a gelatinous substance called hyaluronate, and uh, when that doesn't work, then the orthopedic surgeon will usually say, you need to have surgery. Uh, that is a very simplistic way to look at uh, the treatment of arthritis. And in my experience of treating patients now for uh, uh, almost 15 years, is that there's a lot more to it than that. Treating arthritis of the knee or shoulder is not always easy. And, and one of the reasons is that arthritis has many personalities. Uh, the, uh, we don't even understand sometimes why arthritis causes pain. Uh, for example, I have patients that have terrible bone-on-bone -bone arthritis and they don't have pain. And then I have patients that have mild arthritis and they're in agony. So it's very perplexing. So the, my goal as an orthopedic surgeon is to try to figure out what is the cause of pain. That's my number one goal. It's not always possible to figure out, like I said, treating arthritis is not always easy. So. I do a number of things. Um, these are just some examples of what we can do that involves more than just a steroid injection and a gel injection. Number one, when a patient comes in, uh, I, I do like doing an MRI on a knee. So uh, the MRI does give me information that will help me with treatment. That is something that I do that a lot of other doctors will not do. And the reason other doctors won't do an MRI is because they see arthritis on the x-ray and they say, you have arthritis, you need to have a steroid shot, and that's it. So I do do, I do, do an MRI. The other thing that I do is I do a very careful exam. I, I love examining patients and being the detective and trying to figure out uh, if maybe I can see something in how they walk. Uh, for example, many patients have leg length discrepancies and simply giving them a shoe lift eliminates a significant amount of pain. Or they have bowing, or they have opposite, they have uh, knock knees. Um, so I do an exam. Uh, and even before the exam, I actually talk to the patient and really try to figure out when they're having pain, what kind of pain they're having, where the pain is localized, uh, because I've had patients who say they have uh, knee pain, but they really don't have knee pain. They actually have leg pain, and they really don't even have knee pain related to um, arthritis, but they have other conditions. So it's important to sit down and talk to the patient and inter interview them in a succinct way to get the information that you need to help create a, a differential diagnosis. The examination, a detailed examination, not just touch the knee and go back and forth, but have the person walk. And then the x-rays and the MRI. So if the x-rays show severe arthritis, I review the MRI. And one thing that I look for on the MRI is something very specific. Oftentimes, it's not even uh, mentioned in the MRI report. It's called bone marrow edema. So bone marrow edema is usually found in patients with arthritis. Uh, and it can be due to arthritis or it can be due to a really big meniscus tear. The bone cannot tolerate the weight so therefore, the bone fails, and when the bone fails, they call it edema. So, but technically, what's really happening deep down is uh, the, uh, the marrow area of the bone is experiencing failure. It's like the foundation of a house that's failing, so it crumbles. So the bone actually fails, and it gets edematous, but technically, it's a fracture. It's like a micro fracture. So I look for that, because if they have that, I can treat it. I also look for loose bodies on x-ray and on MRI. I look for root tears of the meniscus, which I fix. And, um, and, uh, and then we can go on after that. So my basic protocol is this in terms of treatment. Number one, if the patient is, um, is out of shape and does have extra weight, I do talk to them candidly and I say, you know what will help your knee is if you unload your knee. So I do talk to people about some weight loss and I give them, um, I give them an option. I actually set them up with a nutritionist at our local hospital. Uh, I have that resource available for people. Um, if, um, if, if they have a problem uh, with um, uh, the bone marrow edema that we talked about or maybe uh, loose debris in their knee, 
I will do an arthroscopy. And I do it knowing full well that if they read up about arthroscopy for arthritis, they're going to see that it's not always successful. I know that. But that's not the only thing I do. So I clean up the loose debris. If they have a root tear, I repair it. And if they have the bone marrow edema, I actually inject it with a substance. It's a paste-like substance called calcium phosphate. I inject it into the bone. It firms up the bone and it eliminates the pain associated with bone marrow edema. I've had some amazing results with this. So arthroscopy, remove loose bodies, remove debris, uh, repair root tears if present, inject calcium phosphate, also known as subchondroplasty, which you can look up. If you look up subchondroplasty, you can read about this. It's been done. And then after the knee is improved as best as, I, as, as best as I can improve it at that point. I rehab the patient. They go to physical therapy. If they have some bowing, I might recommend a unloading brace to help with unloading the knee, but only when they go hiking or for long walks. And then the final uh, treatment that I add to this to, to polish the, the, whole, the, uh, the, the, the algorithm that we're talking about is I offer the patient, if needed still, uh, injections into the knee to improve the internal environment, to make the knee joint fluid healthier, and to decrease inflammation through natural ways. So I don't just inject steroid. Uh, what I do is, I, if I use platelet-rich plasma, which is uh, which has been proven to help patients with arthritis. I use it as a cocktail. I, I add platelet-rich plasma with hyaluronate, inject it into the knee using ultrasound so we can get it into the right site, and that tends to keep the platelets into the knee longer. If we need uh, a, a higher level of treatment, I can, act, I can inject um, uh, various types of stem cells into the joint. These could be obtained either from bone marrow or fat-derived. I'm actually very excited about the fat-derived stem cells. I've been doing this uh, more recently, and I've had some great results. It's, uh, so I can do a fat harvest, inject it into the knee, and then we rehab the patient. And with this process, which takes about three months to complete, patients have done very well. And the best part about it is many patients are able to avoid having a knee replacement. And that's my goal. My goal is, uh, is to preserve the joint that you have. Uh, I try not to replace it if not needed uh, and, um, and improve the functionality and decrease the pain. And that's my ultimate goal. That's, that's what my practice is all about. That's my focus. Uh, and that's what I truly enjoy doing. So I hope that information helps. As you can see, there's a lot more than just steroid, in, steroid injection, steroid injection, steroid injection, uh, knee replacement. Uh, the treatment or the algorithm that I mentioned just now may not be for you. It may not be right. So the best thing to do is to see someone like myself, to do an evaluation, a proper exam, uh, an evaluation of your images, and tell you if it's worth it, if it's worth your time, because it is a commitment. It's like a three-month or maybe a little longer commitment. And, uh, and, um, and I'm hopeful that with that investment in time and commitment that your outcome will be great and you'll, ha you'll be happy with your knee and your knee will be great again.